In this video, I'll demonstrate how to create a scatter plot. What I'm going to do is create a plot using the built-in R method, and then demonstrate the same scatter plot, but using the ggplot2 library to do so. So on line one of this example, I call library of ggplot2. Now once that's loaded, I'm going to start by creating a plot with the built-in R method. So I call plot of iris dollar sign pedal dot length comma iris dollar sign pedal dot width. So it's going to plot the length on the x-axis and the width on the y-axis. And then on line four, I also pass the PCH parameter to the plot. So this is the plotting character. And I set that equal to the vector created by the function C with the values 21, 22, 23. Now these define plotting characters of a filled circle, a filled square, and a filled diamond. So to determine what shape to use, I use the species information. So I index this by the iris dollar sign species. So I put that in square brackets next to the vector. Since species is a factor, it will get mapped to the particular plotting character, either 21, 22, or 23, depending on the species of iris. And I do a similar thing with the background color. So on line five, I have BG equals the vector created by the function C with the character strings red, green, and blue. So that defines the colors. And then I index that again in square brackets with iris dollar sign species. So I'll execute this code for the built-in R plot method. And that creates our plot. So we have the length on the x-axis and the pedal width on the y-axis. And then we have one species plotted with red circles, another with green squares, and the third with blue diamonds. Now let's do the same thing using the ggplot method. So I have on line seven, ggplot. And for arguments, I specify data equals iris. So I specify the data set. And then I use the AES function. So this comes from the ggplot2 library and it's called the aesthetic mapping function. So this helps us define our axes and other things like the shape, color, and size of our plots. So in this parameter, I specify AES and then I specify the x-axis to be equal to the pedal dot length and the y-axis to be equal to the pedal dot width. And then I close the ggplot method. And then to define a single point or each point in our plot, I use the plus operator. So I add to our ggplot a geom point. So a geometric point, geom underscore point. So this is a function call that takes an argument, the AES function, where I specify the color. So color equals species and shape equals species. So it uses those factors to give it some defaults for shape and color. So I'll execute the ggplot function and it'll create a plot very similar to the one we just had. Now, if I flip back and forth between the plots, so in the built-in R plot, we had red circles, green squares, and blue diamonds. And then in the ggplot, we have red circles, green triangles, and blue squares. So the shapes don't map exactly, but it gives us the same plot, just with a different aesthetic. And that concludes this demonstration of creating scatter plots. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to create a line graph on a time series data set. So what I'm going to do is create the line graph using the built-in R plot method and then demonstrate the same line graph, but using the ggplot library to do so. So on line one of this example code, I bring in library dplyr, and line two, I bring in library ggplot2. Now the data set I'm going to be using for this example is the air passengers data set. And this is actually a time series data set. So the class of it is TS. So air passengers contains the number of air passengers by month. And we can see in the help function, so if I type in help air passengers, it's a built-in data set in R. So this is monthly airline passenger numbers from 1949 to 1960. And it's done by monthly totals. So the format is a monthly time series in thousands. So on line five, I'm gonna plot this using the built-in R plot method. Now, since it's a time series, if we pass a time series 
data set to the plot method, it will give us a line graph by default. So I call plot of air passengers. I set the COL, the color, equal blue, the X lab for X label date, the Y label or Y lab equals passengers, and main, so that's the main title, is equal to air passenger numbers 1949-1960. So when I execute this, we get a line graph plotting the numbers, the passenger numbers by date. So it's starting off in 1949, just above 100, and the graph follows this particular trend upwards, going up and down through the months of the year. Now let's look at creating the same plot using ggplot2. So for this, I'm going to have to actually change our data and put it into a different format because I can't just pass the time series data set to the ggplot function as I did with the built-in R method. So on line 10, I create a new data frame called DF passengers, and I assign that to data.frame, and I pass to this function y equals as.vector air passengers. So I convert the passenger numbers to a vector and store it in the variable y of our data frame df passengers. Then on line 13, I had another column called x. So I take df passengers index at the string x and I assign that to 1 to the number n row of df passengers. So it's going to be an enumeration of the months. And then just to check the results of this DF passengers at this point, on line 15, I call head of DF passengers. So we get our two columns, Y being the passenger numbers and X being the enumeration. So now I can create a line graph using ggplot. So I specify on line 16, ggplot, then I pass DF passengers, then the aesthetic function AES with X equals X and Y equals Y. So the ggplot x is assigned to the df passengers x and the ggplot y is assigned to the df passengers y variable. So that's why it looks strange with x equals x and y equals y. Then I have a plus symbol after our ggplot and on line 17 I specify the geometric line or geom underscore line function and this will create tell ggplot to create a line graph. And then plus the labs function for labels. And I specify x equals the character string month. On line 19, I specify y equals the character string passengers. And on line 20, I specify the title equals air passenger numbers 1949 to 1960. So let's execute our ggplot function. And that creates for us a line graph very similar to what we had from the built-in one. So we can select the previous plot and next plot to switch back and forth between the two different plots, the one from ggplot and the one from the internal built-in R plot method. And that concludes this demonstration of creating line graphs. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to create a bar chart. So on line one of my code, I bring in the library ggplot2. But first, I'll create the bar chart using the built-in R function called barplot. And then I'll demonstrate the equivalent using the ggplot2 library functions. So the data set I'm going to be using for this plotting is the mtcars data set. So what I'm going to look at, so I'd like to get a count of the V or S, the V engine or straight engine, by the number of cylinders. So I want to know how many V8s we have, or straight 8s, or V6s, or straight 6s, or V4s, or straight 4s. And I'd like to have a bar plot, or a bar chart, where these counts are stacked. And I'd like to have a bar chart where these counts are stacked. So I'm going to create a table with these counts. So on line 5, I have vs underscore sill underscore count. And I assign that to table of empty cars dollar sign vs and empty cars dollar sign sill for the number of cylinders. So if we create this table and these counts, we see that we have the first row zero. So these are the V engines. So the four cylinder engine has one, the six has one V engine and the eight cylinder engine has 14 V8s. 
Then for the straight engine for row one, we have 10 straight fours, four straight sixes, and no straight cylinder, eight cylinder engines. Now let's plot this. So on line seven, I create a bar plot. So this is the built-in R function. I specify the table VS underscore sill underscore count. Our main argument is the title of the plot. So I'm gonna call this V or S engine by cylinders. The X lab or X label is cylinders. The colors, so I have COL equals the vector created by the function C with the character strings red and green. And then the legend is the vectors with V and S, which stand for the V-shaped engine and the straight engine. So if I execute this bar plot, we get the V or S engine by cylinders. So on our cylinders, on the horizontal axis, we have four, six, and eight cylinders. The red coloring is for the V engines. So you can see there's one cell colored for the four cylinder engines, and then the rest is green. And with the six cylinder engines, part of it is red and the other part is green. So the first part of the red represents three and the green represents four. And then the eight cylinder engines, well, they're all V8s. So there's 14 of them. And that's what gets plotted in our bar chart. Now let's look how we can do the same thing using the ggplot2 library. Now the ggplot2 can't take the table of values that I had directly. We need to convert that to a data frame, but we need to be clever about doing it to have it in the right format. So on line 12, I create this data frame using the vs underscore sill underscore count information. So on line 12, I have df underscore count. This is the data frame of the count. And I assign that to data.frame. And I call this function with the first argument being sill. So we have one column representing the cylinders. And this is going to be an as dot factor. So the cylinders we want to consider as factors. So the factors being four, six, and eight. And I want a single row for each count for each either V or S. So I'm going to replicate the call names of VS underscore sill underscore count. So the call names are four, six, and eight, but I want to repeat that twice because I want to count for the V and account for the S. So I rep or replicate it twice. So I pass two as the second argument. So we're going to have the sill call with four, six, eight, four, six, eight as the values for each row. Then I want to get the counts. So the CYL underscore count, the cylinder counts for V and S. Well, in the table, the first row is the V and the second row is the S counts. So I use the C function to combine the vector returned by VS underscore sill underscore count index at one comma. So that's, there are three, a vec this is a vector of three. So one, three, and 14. And VS underscore sill underscore count at index two comma is the second row or the S counts. So 10, four, and zero. And then finally I have VS. So the VS column is going to be a factor, either zero or one. And it's going to be the replication of zero and one. And they're going to be done each three times. So the values will be zero, zero, zero for the V counts and one, one, one for the S counts. So let's create DF count and see what's in it. So on line 17, I have df underscore count. And in the console, we get our records. So a four cylinder, the sill count is one for a V type engine. The six cylinder is a count of three for the V engine. And the eight cylinder is 14 for the V engine. And then for the straight engines, the cylinders of uh, cars with four cylinders, there's 10 of them with a straight engine. And the sixes, there's four of them that are straight sixes and the eight cylinder engines, there's none of them that are straight. Now let's pass this information to ggplot so we can plot the same graph, the same bar chart, but using ggplot. So on line 19, I call ggplot with df underscore count. And then to the AES function, the aesthetic function, we pass x equals the sill. So the x is going to have the cylinders, four, six, or eight, so those factors. The y variable is going to be the sill count. So going up the y axis, and then it's going to fill by the VS column. So the VS has two values, so it's going to stack them because we're filling it this way. 
But we have to add in the geom bar or the geometric bar chart. So on line 20, you have geom underscore bar. So this is the ggplot function to create a bar chart. And the stat I'm set to be identity. So this is going to create our stacked bar chart. And we need it when we specify x, y, and fill variables. Then we add in the labels. So I have plus. And then on line 21, the labs function from ggplot. And I specify x equals cylinders, y equals count, and title equals v or s engine by cylinders. So I'll execute the ggplot function. And we get the same result, although with different colors, as we did with the built-in bar plot function. So we have the cylinders 4, 6, and 8, and we have them filled based on their V or S. Now, if we flip back and forth between the two, you'll notice that it's inverted. So it has the straight variance first. So the four-cylinder engine has 10 straight cylinder engines and one V engine. The six cylinders has four straight sixes and three V6s. And the eight cylinder engine has 14 V8s and no straight engines. And that concludes this demonstration of creating bar charts. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to create a box and whisker plot. For this example, I'm using the built in MT cars dataset. And we're going to group the boxes by number of cylinders, the sill column, and plot that against the gas mileage, the MPG column. So first I'll plot using the built-in R box plot function, and then I'll recreate the plot using the ggplot2 library equivalent. So on line one of my example, I bring in library ggplot2, and then on line three, I'm going to create the box plot. So I call box plot, and I specify the formula mpg tilde sill, cyl, then the data set, MT cars, and then I'm going to put some labels. So the main title, so main equals car mileage by cylinder, X lab for the X label equals cylinders, and Y lab or Y label equals gas mileage. So let's run this plot. So we have a box and whisker plot. So for each of the cylinders, four, six, and eight, we get boxes that show the interquartile range of the data, the IQR, and then inside the boxes we have a median line, and then we have lines extending beyond the boxes, the whiskers. And this shows the range, the 1.5 times the interquartile range. The points outside of the lines, so for cylinder 8 we have a point at the bottom, so this is an outlier. So any points shown beyond our box and whiskers are outliers in our data. Now let's do the same with the ggplot function. So on line eight, I have ggplot. I specify the data set, mt cars. Then the second argument is the aesthetic function, aes, where I specify x equals. And then for the cylinders for the ggplot, we need to be specific about the factors or not. So cylinders is not a numeric value, it's a factor. So I call as.factor with cyl, and then the y equals mpg. So we're plotting the cylinders against the miles per gallon. And then I have a plus, so I add the geom box plot function, so geom underscore box plot. And that tells ggplot that we want to plot this in the box plot format. So I'll execute this code, and we get the ggplot variant of a box and whisker plot. So here we have the as.factor sill as the horizontal axis with our three factors 4, 6, and 8, and then the MPG ranges going from 10 all the way up to 35. And again, we get our boxes with our median lines, and then the whiskers extend beyond the boxes. But in this format, we don't have the horizontal lines marking the end of the whiskers, but that's okay. And for the eight-cylinder engine, we do have a couple of outliers shown in our data. And that concludes this demonstration of creating box and whisker plots. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to create histograms. We'll begin by using the built-in R function called hist, and then I'll demonstrate the equivalent using the ggplot2 library functions. 
So to begin, I bring in the library ggplot2. Now the dataset we're going to use is the old faithful geyser dataset, and this is called faithful, and that's one of the built-in ones that comes with R. So I'll call help on faithful, and it will bring up the description from the R documentation. So this is the old faithful geyser data, and if we go down to the format, it gives us a data frame with 272 observations on two variables. The first variable is eruptions, and this is the eruption time in minutes, and then the waiting, so the waiting time to the next eruption in minutes. So it's the time between eruptions, and then the time an eruption lasts. What we're going to focus on are the eruption duration, so the eruption time. So on line 5, we have the hist function, and its first argument is a vector, in this case the faithful dollar sign eruptions. Then we specify some labels. So on line 6, I have main equals eruption duration frequencies. Line 7 has the x label, so x lab equals duration. And we can set the limit, so y lim equals the vector created by c of 0 and 80. So that'll be the range of frequencies that we count on the y axis. So now I'll run the histogram, and we can see the result. So we get a plot of the histogram. It shows the frequencies of particular eruption durations. Now the bars of the histogram represents counts covering an eruption duration range that fall within in a particular bin. So in this case, the bin is 30 seconds. So the first bar appears to cover from one and a half minutes to two. And then from two to three, we have two bins. So 30 seconds each from two to two and a half, two and a half to three, three and a half to four, four and a half to five, and five to five and a half. So we can say the bins are 30 seconds wide. So now let's look at the ggplot equivalent. So on line 10, I have ggplot. I specify the data set, so the faithful data frame. Then AES, the aesthetic function, I specify the x column, so x equals eruptions. And then I add the type of plot. In this case, the geom histogram or geom underscore histogram function. So this is a ggplot2 function to create a histogram. And we specify the breaks. So this will be a vector that we create with the seq function, the sequence function. So we go from 1.5 to 5.5. So we can match up the breaks with the built-in r hist function that we called. And our width is the by parameter by 0.5. So half a minute or 30 seconds. The color, so this is the outline color I'm setting to equal black. And the fill is equal to white. So we can specify different colors. But in this case, I'll use black and white to match the built-in function. And then we add the limit, in this case, the x limb, and it's a vector created by C of 1.5 and 5.5. So we want the limits to match the range in the breaks as well. And then finally, the labs function to create labels, where I set x equal to duration, y equals frequency, and title equals eruption duration frequencies. So let's create the plot with ggplot. And now we have the equivalent plot using ggplot, and it takes on the same shape with some differences in how it looks. But it's the same information with the same duration frequencies and the same bins. So if we select the previous plot from the toolbar and go back and forth between the two, we can see that it's pretty much the same plot, just with a different design. Now if we'd like to change the plot, if I'd like to change my ggplot, Maybe I don't want to step by 30 second widths. Maybe I want 15 second widths. So if I go to line 13, if we go to the breaks parameter of geom histogram, I want to change the sequence to step by 0 0.25 instead of 5. So these will be 15 second increments. And now if I run the ggplot command again, we get more bins and the bin widths are smaller. So each bin represents a 15 second range and the frequencies counted for that particular range. And that concludes this demonstration of creating histograms. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to create a bubble plot. For this, I'm using the ggplot2 library to create this bubble plot. Now a bubble plot is a scatter plot that encodes another piece of information. So we visually represent three variables instead of two. 
So we have the x and y axes that represent the first two variables, but we also have the size of the point, which represents the third variable. Now I'm going to be using the MT Cars dataset from the built-in R datasets. So on line one of this example, I bring in the library ggplot2. And now before I create the plot, I want to convert the number of cylinders of the car to a factor, because I'm going to use that to determine the color of the point. So we're actually encoding four pieces of information. So mtcars$sil is assigned to as.factor of mtcars$sil. So on line 5, I have my ggplot function, where I pass mtcars, then the aes function, the aesthetic function, where I specify the x, which is equal to the mpg, the mileage of the car, and y is equal to wt for the weight. Then I add the geom point, so geom underscore point function, which creates a plot, a scatter point. And then I have AES, where I specify the size of the point to be equal to HP. So the horsepower will determine the size. Then I set the color equal to CYL. So the number of cylinders will be represented by the color of the point. And then I fill the point again with the color using CYL. And then I set an alpha property so that it's semi-transparent. So I'll set the alpha equal to 0 0.1. Now I'll execute the plot, and we can see what we get. So in the plot, we have our various points plotted miles per gallon against the weight. So if you look, the lighter cars tend to be the ones with the better mileage. The horsepower varies slightly, so it generally trends to towards bigger, but there's not always the case. So we can see cars that get good gas mileage that are light, but might have a lot of horsepower. And then bigger cars, these blue ones, these big V8 engines that get worse gas mileage, but they're also heavier cars. And then the green ones, the six cylinder engines fall somewhere in the middle. So as I said, a bubble plot is a scatter plot that encodes another piece of information representing the three variables using the size. But we can actually use color to represent even more information. So here we have red, blue, and green. So we're visually representing four variables with this bubble plot. And that concludes this demonstration of creating bubble plots. In this exercise, you'll load a data set to be used in a visualization. You'll choose an appropriate visualization to use for your data set, and then finally plot the results. Now you can pause the video and perform the exercise, and when you've completed it, come back to the video to see what I did. Now here's how I carried out the exercise. So the data set I chose is the iris data set. And how I'm going to visualize this is in a bubble plot. So on line three, I use ggplot. I specify the iris data set and then the aesthetic function AES. And I give it x equal sepal.width and y equals sepal.length. So I'm plotting my axes with sepal width and sepal length. And then I add in the geom point. So geom underscore point. I specify the aesthetic function again, AES, for the point. And the size of the point is going to be based on the pedals. So the size is equal to pedal.width times pedal.length. So you can think of as size encoding the area of the pedal for the particular iris flower. Then on line 5, I set the color to represent the species and the fill color also to be the species. And I set the alpha channel equal to 0.1 so that if there's op overlapping data points, that we can see through to the underlying data points through the transparency. So now I'll create the plot. And then we have our plot, the bubble plot with the points representing the sepal width and sepal length. The color of the point represents the species, the Setosa versicolor or Virginica, and the size of the point represents the area of the petal. And that concludes this exercise on data visualization.